The Golden Era describes the time where the Land of Dawn lived in peace. All areas were free of war and most humans and other beings could live a happy and safe life. This is at least the official version. The end of the Golden Era marks the day where the monstrous abyss opened once more within the Land of Dawn in the Barren Lands, leading a force of dark creatures into the world once more. To protect the world, the priests of the Lord of Light started to search for pure maidens. The legends say if one of these pure maidens drink a cup of holy water, they will become pregnant with an angel. And this angel will be the protector of the world against the evil forces. Soft rays of moonlight and the smell of flowers surround a young man and a woman as they exchange vows. They promise to each other to stay together until the last day and to live a happy life together from this day on. Just seconds later, she is swept away by a number of priests who held her down, forcing her to drink holy water in the name of the Lord of Light and take her to the Monastery of Light. On that day, that was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, she became pregnant with an angel and was forced to stay alone in the dark room, separated from the love of her life. Yet, under the supervision of the priest who took her away, she had little choice but to accept the honor that was given to her by the Lord of Light. The pregnancy of one who bears an angel is an almost unbearable long and slow process. Over the three year period her heart grew heavier, tortured by the loneliness and the darkness. She longed for a lover, yearning to be with him once again. After two years had passed, she couldn't take it anymore and escaped the temple to reunite with him. Together they lived happily once again. Yet it was only a short lived happiness. The priest found her in no time and her lover was slain in front of her eyes for threatening to defile the Lords of Light divine bloodline. And she was taken back to the monastery. She was consumed by pure despair, wishing only to join her lover to death. However, each attempt to take her life was quickly shut down. And so another year passed, at the end of which her wish was finally granted, as she died during childbirth. What she left behind were her twins, a boy and a girl. The newborn girl glowed with the holy luminance from her head to toe, yet the boy had the eyes of the late lover of his mother. The legend said that only females could be angels, so the boy was clearly a human baby fathered by the lover of his mother. The priest tried to slay this unwanted human baby, yet whenever they tried to harm him, a dazing light would burst out of Raphaela, protecting her brother from all harm. The cleric of light quickly caught on to this, realizing as well that that boy must be the son of this human man. Yet incredibly, it seems that he still possesses the power of the angels. This was considered as a miracle and they abandoned all ideas of killing the boy. Instead, they choose to keep the birth of a male angel as a secret from everyone. The Monastery of Light covered up the truth so masterfully that even the twins themselves knew nothing about it. And so, the twins Argus and Raphaela grew up together, undergoing the same teaching and training. The only thing that set them apart was how they were treated. Raphaela was seen as a beautiful ray of light, a holy being. In the eyes of the people, Raphaela was the one true angel that would protect them from the creatures of the abyss. Argus on the other hand was kept in the shadows and forever barred from the glory he deserved. While he fought for the light, Argus remained in the darkness. Still, Argus' faith in the light held strong for many years, just as resilient as the one of his sister Raphaela. Argus loved his sister dearly, as she also loved him. He cherished her and didn't really care about who of them bathed in more glory. Raphaela bore witness to this and many times wished to speak out for her brother, to change the attitude people held towards him. Not once was she successful though. She couldn't understand why he was treated like an outcast. No matter how hard he tried, how great his sacrifices were, they still treated him the same. Although the two experienced entirely different treatments, the two were still an inseparable pair that carried deeply for one another. They both were kind-hearted and as soon as they came of age, they swore to uphold their mission, to use their power to protect the peace and to spread the light. However, once they became older, Raphaela noticed the change in Argus' attitude and beliefs. Raphaela was always an attentive soul and so she noticed it quickly when Argus' attitude towards humankind began to change. She believed that humanity was good and kind, yet such qualities were lost once spoiled by the abyss. Argus on the other hand begged to differ. In his eyes it was humankind who were to blame for the endless wars, for their chaos and evil presented to the demons who took this opportunity and exploited it. This being the case, why should he even bother listening to their commands? The twins had several arguments concerning this, but nothing could change their beliefs. The two diverge in terms of the individual philosophies. 
And after a while, the tactics on the battlefield began to differ as well. In a battle against the soldiers of the Abyss, Argus fought on tirelessly as he was looking for a swift victory. Raphaela commanded the troops to retreat, but Argus disregarded her as he headed deep into the demon's nest. As a result of this, he fell into the trap of the demons. He exploited this ambush to his advantage though. Argus' keen mind was just as formidable as his physical strength. And with this, he turned the tables on his foes by allowing himself to be taken deep into the camp. He wiped out a chunk of the numbers, both demons and the humans that sided with them. Before setting off once more though, he decided to steal away the legendary demonic sword that was kept in this area. But as soon as he grabbed it, a barrage of strange memories surged into his mind. He entered the mind of his mother, witnessed how the priest of the Monastery of Light forced her to drink holy water, saw how they slaughtered the love of her life, his father in front of his eyes, and felt the same loneliness and despair right before giving birth to them. It was then that the memories came to a sharp halt. Argus finally understood why the Monastery of Light decided to cover up his true identity. He finally realized why he was the only male angel. He was no holy being, but instead a member of those he detested the most, a son of a human. The members of the monastery knew all of this and decided to slay his parents to exploit his powers as their own. They had stolen everything from him. Argus returned from the enemy's camp with a demonic blade in his hand. A threatening dark haze swirled around him. Though Raphaela tried to pull him out of the darkness, he broke away and slain the troops around her before escaping. Little did he knew that the reason his blade possessed such monumental powers, that the reason it gave him his lost memories was that it was cursed by the god of destruction, Sith. His mind was tainted by this evil curse, awakening a cruel brutality inside of him. Argus was driven by his own rage. Several months passed and the twins finally reunited in the Barren Lands. Raphaela hoped that she could bring back her lost brother into the light again. But once she saw Argus, she knew that her beloved brother was long gone. The golden aura that surrounded him once, his radiant wings, they were nowhere to be seen. In their place was an oppressive aura of cruelty and pitch black wings of darkness. It seemed to her that Argus had lost himself to the darkness and welcomed its embrace. Why he embraced the darkness was unknown to her of course. She doesn't know anything about the circumstances of her birth yet. And it would be very interesting to see a reaction to it once she knows the truth. Countless humans had been slaughtered by Argus' hand and she knew that she had to put an end to this. Despite all of this however, he was still her flesh and blood, her beloved brother. And she couldn't bear to raise her sword against him. Each sibling watched the other from afar. Argus knew that having learned the truth of the past, there was no way he could ever go back. He clenched his demonic blade tight, turning and leaving her behind. The angel had abandoned all he once had. Once human blood had flown within him and he was blessed by the gods themselves. Once he had lived for nothing but the light, for peace. From that day on however, it was an endless curse he bared with him instead. A fated curse inherited by the god of destruction. Now he's Argus, the only dark angel in the world. As time went on, Raphaela grew into the woman she is today, an angel admired by all, the savior of the apocalypse, an embodiment of the light. Despite this, she could never bear to face the closest to her. She knew that one day she had to face Argus on the battlefield. Time passes never to return. No matter if you're a human or an angel, no one can turn back the hands of time. Now if you want a bonus of up to 30% for all the diamonds you buy, re-download Mobile Legend with Aptoid. The step-by-step -step guide is in the description. So do it now! Also if you want to check out my other story videos, click right here to get to the playlist. See you over there!